Hey everybody, this is Corey Satterno from UCC, and gamers looking for something a little more hardcore on the Wii, then look no further to Monster Hunter Try. You take on quests, gather supplies, craft new weapons and gears, and collect spoils from the hunt. That's pretty much it. The goal is to have the meanest gear so you can take on the game's most vicious monsters. There are two basic styles of play, Blade and Gunner. Aside from the sword shield combo, all weapons in this game are beyond anything that a human can normally wield. Gunners are great to have alongside. They're often the ones focused on the boss monster while the blades tend to the minions. A skilled gunner can keep the situation from getting out of hand. There is no leveling up, well aside from your online hunter rank, no stats to allocate, no experience grinding, or even special abilities to learn. It's all about your gear and your skill. Monster Hunter Try is a challenging game, and at times, punishing. New gamers to the franchise should expect at least 10 hours worth of play before getting to a good comfort zone. Players will really have to plan out their attacks. Most of the weapons in this game are slow to swing around, and if you're not paying attention, you can knock over a fellow comrade. You'll need to learn where to gather the right materials, which zones have the more hostile monsters, what gears and supplies you'll need to bring for a particular quest, Everything comes from experience. Each monster and boss behaves differently, and you'll really have to pick up the clues to know when to strike. By the end of the game, you'll feel one with the wilderness. New to the franchise is the underwater gameplay. Now it's nice to have a new environment to explore, but maneuvering around the underwater is clunky and tedious. Combat underwater takes some careful precision. The online multiplayer is where this game takes its stride. Players can join up to three other comrades. Capcom has done a very great job here providing a solid online experience. In fact, without going online, many of the later quests are just too difficult to finish alone. It's gratifying though to work so efficiently as a team of skilled hunters. This is probably one of the main reasons why Monster Hunter is the number one franchise in Japan. Crafting and forging plays a big role in this game. Monsters don't drop any weapons or gear, instead you must seek out supplies. Most potions, traps, and special gunner ammo needs to be crafted as well and are not available at the shop. The beauty of this is if you ever run out, like say for example potions while on a crest, you can just gather the supplies you need from the wilderness. The lush open environments are heavily detailed and range from calm grasslands to sandy plains, caves to tropical rainforests. Each region has a unique feel. Even the creatures in this game are highly detailed with a full range of animations that really add to the realism. Monster Hunter Tri hasn't really changed that much. The addition of underwater territory is great, but much remains the same from the previous two installments. If you played Monster Hunter before, you know what you're getting into, just don't expect a complete overhaul. One big plus though is that you finally have full control of the camera. The previous games only let you center the camera. This is a big bonus for making Monster Hunter a more accessible game for everyone. The game may be tough and have a very steep learning curve, but with a little time and effort you'll get sucked into Monster Hunter's world. For my final review for Monster Hunter, I'm giving it a B+. Check out the website for our full review of the game.